the day. Wonder if Tainari's discovered anything. But things weren't looking good with Emily's master yesterday. We should check on things at the hotel first. No longer in critical condition, thankfully. He's still very weak, but with a bit more rest, he should regain consciousness soon. My chemical analysis of a goose also went smoothly, although it certainly raised some questions. Mm -hmm. I was able to identify the components that give the substance its fragrance, but I also noticed an abnormal trace of elemental energy in the sample. Elemental energy? Hard to say. It was such a minute amount, proportionally speaking. Like mixing a single drop of perfume into the ocean. I had to use one of the newest tests developed in recent years to even detect the traces present in the sample. Unless you were abnormally sensitive to elemental energy, I doubt it would have any effect, even if you use the product every day for 10 years. As for whether Master's condition was caused by the elemental energy present in the sample or some other component of the perfume, it's still too early to say. Oh, that reminds Paimon. Did Tainari come and find you? Maybe we could ask him to take a look. Hmm. I received a message from him last night, but I haven't heard anything since. The message said he was looking into some information at the Academia. Oh, Paimon thought he might have stopped by to see you first. Um, excuse me? Is Miss Emily here? Oh, perfect! Familiar faces! Traveler, Paimon, you're here too! Kale? Oh, of course. Tainari's apprentice. He's mentioned you many times. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. And please, no need for formalities. Emily is just fine. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Nice to meet you, too, Miss, uh, <laughs> Emily. Did Tainari send you here, Kale? Yep. Master and the others went through decades' worth of records last night and still haven't had a chance to rest. I'm fast on my feet, so it only made sense for me to come and give you an update. Anyway, based on what they've reviewed so far... They believe there's no indication that a researcher by the name of Vijava ever passed through the Academia. Master considered that possibility as well, but the name wasn't the only dead end. Master tried to track down people with a similar research direction or background, but also couldn't find a match. How is that possible? It's starting to seem very likely. If we want to figure out her true identity, I'm afraid another conversation with those two merchants might be our only... Hey! L Lucian! It's Sylvain! Wait, you don't think Kirio came back, do you? That seems impossible. If someone came in or out of the hotel just now, we would have seen them. It's locked? There's no one here. Lucian! Lucian! That's Sylvain's voice! Hurry, let's check next door! Lucian! Lucian! Come on! Wake up! Uh. <gasps> Emily! Emily! My brother! He's gonna be okay, right? He's, he's just unconscious! Like what happened to Edgar? I'm sorry, Mr. Sylvain, but we were too late this time. 
No, no, that's not... that's not possible. Traveler, Kale, Mr. Sylvain has gone through a huge shock. He needs some space to calm down. Could one of you take him next door? It's not good for him to look at his brother's body like this. Uh, of course. Leave it to me. Thank you both. Mr. Sylvain, let's get you up. Here, take my hand. Nice and slow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take things from here. Just focus on getting some rest. Here, this way. <laughs> Poor guy. He's like a shell of his former self. He may have made some bad decisions in life, but right now, Paimon can't help but feel sorry for him. Good person or bad, the death of a loved one is equally painful. All the moments he shared with his brother, every hardship and triumph they endured together, are now memories he has to carry alone. If Kyria really was behind this, then what exactly did he do to Lucian? Lucian can no longer speak, but the traces left behind by his death most certainly can. Traveler, I've got things covered here at the scene. I'll leave you to contact the sheriff. Who would have thought? Yesterday's case is still up in the air, and now this happens. Miss Emily, I heard you're an experienced forensic doctor. Have you been able to discover anything? Oh, I'm not actually a forensic doctor. I just happen to have some relevant knowledge. I did take a look, though. Judging by the temperature and rigidity of the body, it appears the time of death was sometime last night. I'd have to do a more thorough investigation to find out more. Then, would you mind helping us investigate? Before he left, Tainari said we could trust your judgment if something like this were to happen. Of course, I appreciate your trust. Many of the traces left behind at the scene will fade with time, so the sooner we investigate, the better. We'll help too. We don't know much about dead bodies, but you can leave the other clues to us. To tell you the truth, the exhibition has left us quite short-handed. We're lucky to have your help. are shut tight too seems like the only way to get in would have been through sylvain's room pupils are dilated skin is flushed hmm. no overt external injuries or signs of a struggle Well, 
looks like we've investigated as much as we can. Let's go report back to Emily and Shiam. So, did you find anything? Paimon can show you. Here, it'd be something like this. But, entering through the room next door without alerting Sylvain... Wait, you don't think Sylvain could have been the one who... No, his reaction to the loss of his brother seemed genuine, and he doesn't have a motive. Then, what could have happened last night? I know Sylvain is still in shock, but he's our only available witness. <sighs> we have to take his statement. I agree. Also, I've made some new discoveries, so we might as well head next door and go through everything together. Mr. Sylvain, I need you to tell me everything you and your brother did since yesterday afternoon. Did you see or hear anything strange? After Kyria attacked Edgar, my brother and I were incredibly careful. We returned to our rooms and decided to lock all the doors leading to the hallway. The only door we kept unlocked was the one connecting our rooms. That way, if we heard any commotion coming from the other room, we could help each other. But I didn't hear any sort of commotion last night. Not a single noise! I woke up this morning, opened the door, and... Lucian... Lucian was... So, no movement from the room next door. No forced entry via Sylvain's room. No signs of a struggle at the scene. And no external injury on Lucian's body. What kind of cause of death are we dealing with here? I did notice a few things about the body. Lucian's pupils were dilated and his skin was flushed. Very similar to Master's symptoms after the attack yesterday. There weren't any traces of liquid in his mouth or nose, so it's unlikely he was forced to ingest anything. The more plausible explanation is that he inhaled a substance without knowing it, and I'd say that substance was likely a goose. A goose? No, no that's not possible. In inhaling, a goose won't kill you. And anyway, it, it would have been for just one night. No, that's not what I meant. Emily, you ran your tests, didn't you? Go on, tell everyone whether you found any poison. No, I didn't find any common toxins. <laughs> See? A ghost is harmless. The market response proved that years ago. That may be true for most people, but not for everyone. Master! Edgar? You're up and about already? <coughs> Thanks to Emily, I'm out of the woods for now. Sylvain... No matter how hard you may try to hide it, the truth will always come to light. Edgar! Even if we could keep it a secret for another ten or twenty years, do you think Kyria would just let us be? No. He would never give up. Not if he's doing all of this for Yelena. 
<sighs> That's Vijava's real name. Yelena wasn't a scholar from Sumeru. She was an exiled Fatus from Snezhnaya. The Fatus? The Fatui. Well, that means the elemental energy present Nagust was... Ah, so you've already detected it. Well, Sylvain, looks like there's truly no reason to hide things now. Oh. The August Flower was created with the mutative and distorting power of a delusion. A... Uh, a delusion? The Fatui, delusions... I never would have thought a ghost was hiding this many secrets. Born of a delusion, August contained distorted elemental energy. A prolonged exposure over many years could have a harmful effect on the body. <laughs> That's enough, Edgar. I'll take it from here. At first, Yelena wanted to keep refining the perfume and the flower. But no one knew how long the perfume mania was going to last back then. It didn't have any effect on ordinary people, anyway. Every day we postponed going to market was another day of lost earning potential. So you decided poisoning people was worth the risk? <sighs> Listen, it's not like it was good for business. But all that talk about a goose being harmful over time... Yelena was just speculating. The impact was practically negligible. Unless you were particularly sensitive to elemental energy or had an entire bottle shoved down your throat like Edgar, you could use the product for decades and be completely fine. It may be true there are no records of a goose poisoning in Fontaine. But even if no one was acutely poisoned, willfully bringing a product to market despite explicit knowledge of its harmful effects is still a serious crime. <laughs> that explains why you were so intent on keeping Yelena and Kyria's involvement a secret all this time despite readily confessing to all your financial crimes. The Fatui, Delusions, Auguste. If the Marochese Phantom discovered the connection between the three, there would have been enough evidence to send you to the Fortress of Meripede for life. Ha! If I'd known coming to Sumeru would put a target on my back, I would have been more than happy to stay there. At least that way, Lucian would still be alive. Oh, these years without any sign of Kyria, and he pops up out of nowhere the minute my brother and I get out of prison? It couldn't be any clearer who the kid's after. A goose was harmless before. The fact that it's killing people all of a sudden must be his doing as well. So there's bad blood between you? What about Yelena's death? Was that a cover-up too? A way to destroy evidence? I'll admit, we thought about it at one point. We took care to disguise the product circulating on the market, and no one was questioning Yelena's fake identity. But if the Mara Chaussé Phantom decided to look into the flower beds, it would have been the end. Yelena's ties to the Fatui, the role of the delusion. Everything would have been exposed. Before we could even put our plan in motion, Yelena beat us to it. 
she burned all her flower beds and threw herself into the fire as well. But... but if her goal was to destroy evidence, there would have been no reason to do that to herself. Yeah, she could have just burned the flower beds and fled with her brother! I thought about it for a long time, but it wasn't until just now that I finally understood her reasoning. Everything she did, it was for her brother, Kyria. <sighs> One of the reasons they defected from the Fatui was the deterioration of Yelena's body due to her excessive use of a delusion. She didn't want her brother to follow in her footsteps after her death. After arriving in Fontaine, Yelena continued using the delusion to cultivate the auguste flower, weakening her body even further. There were times when she couldn't even walk. So she couldn't flee with her brother because she was afraid of holding him back. If her true identity was exposed, she and her brother would face pressure from both Snezhnaya and Fontaine. The Auguste flower and Yelena's own corroded body both bore the mark of a delusion. There would have been no way to avoid suspicion. So, in the end, she burnt it all to ash, including herself. With all the evidence erased, Kyria was free to take the Mora and run. So the wealth you earned from a goose, it wasn't destroyed in the fire. Yelena gave it to her brother? Most likely. Before Yelena died, she said if anything happened to her, she was going to leave everything to her brother. We just didn't realize she meant our cut as well. That's why Lucian and I were searching for Kyria, to take back our Mora and the Auguste flower. We just didn't realize Kyria was baiting us the whole time. It was all a trap. <laughs> but why is Kyria out for revenge anyway? Doesn't he know about Yelena's decision to sacrifice herself? I don't think he knew his sister was nearing death. Elena always wore heavy makeup around him to conceal her deteriorating appearance. She kept herself busy with work to keep out of sight. That way her brother wouldn't notice how she could barely walk. Then all I'll need to do is tell Kyria what really happened and then I'll give up on his revenge! I'm not so sure. Even if he knew the truth, he'd still find someone to blame. He might think Yelena was forced into using a delusion to cultivate a ghost, or something like that. It's hard to pull yourself out of that kind of hatred, especially when you've been living in that headspace for so many years. Very true. Even if Yelena's death was her own choice, I wouldn't call myself innocent either. Edgar! What are you talking about? Think about it, Sylvain. If we hadn't been in such a hurry to capitalize on the perfume mania all those years ago, do you think Yelena would have elected to take those risks? If we hadn't been so blinded by greed, so insistent on increasing the scale of the flower cultivation, do you think Yelena's health would have deteriorated as fast as it did? If we hadn't invited the Mara Chaussée Phantom to our doorstep by breaking the law at every turn, Yelena could have survived. <laughs> she knew her limits. She knew her days were numbered. Maybe it was for her brother, but she was in it for the Mora just as much as us. We were just trying to earn a bit of Mora. 
And what, we deserve to die for that? Target me for being the mastermind, sure. But what about Lucian? He was just following my orders. Lucian's crime, was it really so extreme that he had to pay for it with his life? <sighs> the only person that can answer that question is a judge. <sighs> Fine. I've said my piece anyway. Drag me back to Fontaine to stand trial. I don't care. <sighs> Three people from Fontaine, one from Snezhnaya, and a crime committed in Port Ormos. What a headache. Well, we can only wait until the Academia sends someone to deal with it. I'm guessing we'll have to contact Fontaine as well. In any case, we won't really know anything until tomorrow. <sighs> with the exhibition, we don't even have space in Port Ormos to detain anyone. Such a headache. Hmm. The hotel could suffice. You could station a few officers to keep an eye on Sylvain and myself. Although with Sylvain's mental state and my physical one, I don't think you need to worry about a jailbreak. Mr. Edgar, are you saying... If Sylvain is to stand trial, then I deserve the same fate. A crime is a crime, accomplice or not. I'd just like to take care of a few things before I go. Uh, say goodbye to my plants and all that. As for Sylvain, I'm sure he also has some goodbyes of his own. <sighs> Would you be willing to grant that request, Sheriff? Well, all right. I'll talk to the Academia. No matter who you were in Fontaine or what crimes you committed, the man we grew to know in Sumeru proved himself to be a good person. Your request is granted. You have my thanks, Sheriff. happen tonight? Oh, you mean the possibility that Kyria might try to finish what he started? Yeah, all we know is that he uses a goose to poison people, but we still have no idea how to catch him in the act. If he targets Sylvain or Edgar again, we might not be able to stab him. That may be true, but what if we can take advantage of his desperation? If we take advantage of this situation and lure him in on purpose, we might finally have the chance to talk to him. Master, no. That's too dangerous. <laughs> so, that's your plan. If Kyria learns we're being taken away tomorrow, his last chance to enact his revenge would be tonight. In other words, you want to use us as bait to capture him. Capture? Not necessarily. I just want to talk. What? Are you afraid of him? Afraid? <laughs> This is my only chance to make him pay for what he did. I'm spending the rest of my life in prison anyway. I can't just sit back and let him ride off into the sunset with our fortune. There's no way I'm letting him get away with it. Not after what he did to Lucian. <laughs> As for the danger, everyone else just needs to make preparations in advance to protect us. I'll admit, it could work. We just need to spread the word that Edgar and Sylvain are leaving tomorrow. Then I'll station some of my men around the hotel. If we have your assistance as well, 
our chance of success would be even higher. I still have some reservations. But if you insist on carrying out this plan, I won't deny you my help. I'll also keep watch. Although I think Sylvain and myself should remain alone in our respective rooms. If Kyria noticed another person in the room, he might decide to turn back. And besides, it's possible he's already transformed Auguste into a potent toxic gas. Uh, you mean if he doesn't see a way to get his hands on the two of you, he might get so desperate that he'll just start using Auguste on everybody? If that were to happen, everyone standing guard, even the innocent citizens in Port Ormos would all be in danger. That's why everyone else needs to keep to the shadows. <laughs> You're still recovering. You need to rest. <sighs> this old pack of bones doesn't bounce back like it used to. I suppose I'll just have to leave the rest to you. All right, we can figure out a plan to keep watch later. Right now, I say we split up and start spreading that information before it's too late. Have you heard? Mr. Edgar's been detained. He's being taken away tomorrow. What? He's the one who helped craft all the fragrances for our shop. He taught my child how to make perfume. How could this happen? He hasn't been convicted yet. Let's just wait and see what the court has to say. Oh, everyone on the street is talking about the rumors. No matter where Kiri is hiding, he must have heard them by now. Let's head back to the hotel and take a break. We can see how the other preparations are going while we're at it. wants to talk to you and the Traveler about our plans for the Night Watch. Thank you, Kale. But first, here, I prepared a kind of herbal tea that helps calm the spirit. Why don't you have some? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I'm okay. Oh, it's not good to be so tense, especially when we've got a long night ahead of us. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I couldn't help but notice that something seems to be on your mind. Uh, was... was it that obvious? You seem very preoccupied with Kyria's revenge. If there's anything you want to talk about, I'm happy to listen. Oh! Uh... I, uh... Hey, Emily! Kale! Oh, are we interrupting something? No, not at all. This will be easier to talk through with you here anyway. I've just been thinking. If Kyria has the capacity to commit murder while remaining completely undetected, why didn't he target Sylvain along with Lucian last night? There was just a single door separating them. If his intention was to target both brothers, then there was barely anything standing in his way. Don't you think? When I accompanied Sylvain to his room after Lucian died, and saw how distraught he was, I suddenly realized... 
Maybe Kyria did that on purpose. Maybe he wanted Sylvain to experience the pain of losing a loved one before he completed his ultimate revenge. So did he attack Edgar as a warning then? To scare Sylvain and Lucian? Based on what we've heard about Kyria, that may very well be the case. Losing his sister all those years ago. What has been going through his head? What has he been forced to endure? Whenever I get to thinking like that, I just can't help but wonder. If I were in his place, would I be able to let go of that hatred? I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't think like that. Not after everything he's done. But... I just can't help it. There's nothing wrong with the way you're feeling. Empathy is a part of human nature. In all my years of cleaning up crime scenes, I've witnessed countless families mourn their loved ones. Their cries of devastation and anger still echo through my mind. Even now. Some of them even try to stop me, begging me not to erase the last remnants of their loved ones. But getting swept up in those emotions will corrupt your judgment. Surround yourself with fragrance for too long, and your sense of smell will become dull. Allow yourself to be consumed by your emotions, and you lose the ability to think rationally. So while you hold on to that sense of empathy, you also need to ask yourself, Do Sylvain and Lucian really deserve to die? How much did they truly know about the Fatui and the delusion? Did they force Yelena to make those decisions? Answering those questions requires a lot of time and evidence, while a single act of vengeance can put those answers forever out of our reach. I've witnessed a lot of deaths in Fontaine. When someone dies, a certain amount of information can be inferred from the traces left behind at the scene. But generally speaking, death will just leave most questions unanswered, and the whole picture ever incomplete. Once you're consumed by hatred, it will become next to impossible to think about things that way. For someone like Kyria, I'm sure right and wrong lost all meaning a long time ago. You're right. The fact that we can approach these questions from this perspective isn't because we're more rational than them. It's because we're fortunate enough not to have suffered that kind of loss. But that also makes us perfectly positioned to stand on the outside and try to pull them back from the brink before it's too late. I understand Kiri's decision, but I still want to stop him. Master, Sylvain, and Kyria. <sighs> they all deserve to survive. Huh. The fortunate and the unfortunate. Hmm. Emily! Traveler! Mm huh? Edgar, you're here too? Oh, it's you two! Um, didn't you head back to your room to rest, Edgar? Is it really okay for you to be out and about like this? <laughs> A little exercise never hurt anyone. Besides, I don't have much time left in Sumeru. So I'd like to take care of my plants while I still can. We could do that for you, Master. No need. I've grown attached to these flowers. And this is my last chance to say goodbye. Come tomorrow. I'll be happy to entrust their care to, to you. I would imagine Sheriff Sham is here for a more important reason. Uh, the Night Watch! You mentioned earlier that we still need to confirm our plans. That's right. 
I've stationed some of my men around the surrounding area, but we still don't have anyone standing guard next to Sylvain's room. Exactly. After some discussion, we concluded that Sylvain has the highest risk of being attacked next. You're the most skilled fighter here, Traveler. And Emily's expertise is sure to come in handy in a pinch. That's why I want you two stationed next to Sylvain's room. So, are you up for it? Sounds perfectly reasonable. <sighs> I'll be glad to have your help tonight, Traveler. Huh! Not a peep! Has Kyria given up on his revenge? Hmm, guess we'll have to keep at it. <sighs> Still nothing unusual. Paimon took a peek into the room next door and Sylvain's already sleeping. Perhaps Kyrie's true motive was simply forcing Sylvain to confess his crimes. No, that can't be right. If all he wanted was for Sylvain to be convicted for his true crimes, he could have tipped off the Mara Chasse Phantom years ago. There must be something we're missing. Hmm, something extremely important. Maybe we just need to calm down a little. Uh, how about some tea? That herbal blend from earlier was pretty tasty. You're right. Um, maybe we can look for a different distraction then. Like, uh, like looking at the flowers. Oh, there's a glaze lily here. Paimon didn't notice it earlier. Flowers, glaze lilies, incense. <gasps> oh no! Sylvain's room! Quick! Wait, what? Hey, did you hear? Someone was attacked again last night. It was the older of the Merchant Brothers, right? Yeah, I think his name was uh, Sylvain. Poor guy was murdered in cold blood. First it was Mr. Edgar, then that merchant named Lucian, and now this. Listen up, everyone. This is an active crime scene. Please, no loitering. It's been three days and they haven't even caught a glimpse of the guy. What is going on? Do you think it could be the work of an evil spirit? I, I mean, how do you get away with something like that with so many people watching? Keep it moving, everyone. No loitering. <coughs> I suppose. I'm next. <sighs> you don't know that. Kyria already attacked you once, and you survived. Perhaps he doesn't consider your crime to be worthy of death. You were the only reason I managed to survive, Emily. I never did thank you for that, did I? Even if I wasn't there... Tai Nari was also in the vicinity. He would have been able to help. Is that so? I suppose I'm a very fortunate person then. I have exceptional students, caring friends, and the respect of my peers. If it is indeed my time to go, then I'll die without regrets. But Kyria has nothing. Helena is gone. Now, his enemies are too. It really makes you wonder if there's even a reason to keep on living. 
If you really want an answer, I suppose you'll have to ask Kiria himself once we finally catch him. Ah, well, I hope it all goes well. Emily, there's something else I'd like to ask of you. With everything that's happened, holding the exhibition is off the table now. But so many flowers were transported here for the show, some of them thousands of miles away from their homeland. I can't let them wither away with no one to care for them. Whether Kyria gets to me first, or I'm sent back to Fontaine to stand trial, I won't be around to look after them. I know it's a lot to ask, but could I entrust them to your care? Of course, Master. Really? Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Now I truly have nothing to worry about. Sheriff Sham still has some questions for me, so I've got to go. Uh, go ahead. Best not to keep him waiting. He can be quite <laughs> impatient. I'm sorry, Master. 